this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. At the Lake Club, every night is full of life. But when the music ends and the crowds go home, the place is as cold as a crypt. An angry ghost stalks the employees and warns that one of them is about to die. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. The Lake Club in Springfield, Illinois, has served as a way station for gamblers and musicians. But not all of them were simply passing through. For one soul, the Lake Club was a trap, and death was just the beginning. In the summer of 1974, Lake Club owners Philip Dean and Tony Barbato show the club to a prospective renter named Bill Carmine. Hey, Bill. Nice to meet you. I had a construction business with my dad and brother. Due to the energy crunch, uh, the business fails. We kind of pooled our money together and started looking for something that we could invest in. But we found out that the old Lake Club was up for grabs. The place first opened in 1941. Here, legendary musicians like Nat King Cole and Ella Fitzgerald played to crowds of up to 1,200 guests. The club has been closed for the past six years. But the owners have taken good care of their property. Sure. The whole place. I mean, turn on the lights when you come in. The glasses were all there. The chairs were all there. It was almost like a turnkey walk in and, and open up. All Bill needs to reopen the nightclub is a liquor license and a band. Philip Dean finalizes the deal in a back office. There you go. Yes, sir. Bill notices a hole in the ceiling. What's coming out of here? What's that? What's that there? A water leak or something? Dusty, you can fix that, can't you? Yeah, that would be good as new, no problem. A couple days, good as new. Dean quickly reassures yeah, no him that the caretaker, uh, Dusty, will yeah, fix the Dusty, problem. You got six years right? Of, right? <laughs> Each day, Bill spends long hours alone in the club, getting the place ready for business. 
one afternoon. I could hear the piano playing in the back. Nobody there. I know I heard that piano. I felt a little chill. In the fall of 1974, the Lake Club opens under the management of Bill Carmine. When the word finally got out and we opened the doors that night, we were just completely overwhelmed. They drank us out of beer, we were out of booze, we, we ran out of ice. We made it through the first night, and got a little better prepared for the second night. And it just kept on going like that for a while. Bill quickly realizes that he can't run the club by himself. He turns to musician Tom Blasco. Hey, 650, buy you guys a drink. I first became involved with the Lake Club when my band was hired there. And uh, I met one of the owners, and we became friends. You do such a good job. I know you got We got a report going with each other. I asked him if he wanted to invest. I want you to come in, maybe manage the place. It was an interesting scenario, so I jumped in on it. Hey, I want to welcome everybody to the Lake Club. We'd like to introduce all of you to... I got some different entertainment in there, and the place just went great guns. Surprise, surprise. After hours, the managers hold private parties for friends and employees. Over time, co-workers become like family. For waitress Barbara Lard, it seems like the perfect working environment. I started working at the Light Club when I was 21 and a half, and I was very young, very naive, and not in any way, shape, or form prepared for what would come in the future. Suddenly surrounded by this cold chill. 
It was a drafty cold, and it would just go right through you, just engulf your whole body. Tom assumes that he's neglected to turn off one of the air conditioning units in the basement. It was like someone was right behind you. Just very frightening, very frightening. One night after closing, Tom Blasco has a terrifying feeling that he is not alone. And I became extremely scared. Ran out of the place and left the lights and air conditioner running. This is something that you're kind of trying to rationalize is not happening when it is happening. All right. All right, get the Tom decides not to tell anyone about the experience. Well, I thought sometimes when you tell people these stories, they'd look at you like you're a little bit crazy, so I just opted to keep it to myself and see what happened. <laughs> Bill tells Tom that he's had some strange experiences inside the club. Are you sure you didn't see anybody? There was no one in there. I walked in there, the piano cover was down. I walked around all over the place. There's nobody there, man. Well, I think the scariest thing was the unknown part about it. You didn't know what was happening or who it was or what it was. You can't let anybody know about this. All right, all right. I could have had the business. Tom and Bill don't want to frighten the employees or patrons. You really don't want word to leak out. Otherwise, people wouldn't want to come out and come to the business. For weeks, Tom and Bill don't experience anything unusual. Anytime, you gotta do me a favor. Yeah, of course. I got a real important meeting, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Can you do me a favor? Can you finish doing the money, the credit card receipts, the books, and all that? And yeah, 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 no problem. All right, man. I'll see you tomorrow. One night after business hours. could hear like a din of people talking. <laughs> you couldn't make out what they were saying, but you could hear a conversation going on. 
I started carrying a rosary because being a Catholic, I thought that would protect me against any evil or bad things that were going on there. That morning, I come in to get set up for the next night. Here's all the cash still out on the table, and the safe was still open. everywhere for something. I couldn't see anybody. Nobody was around. And somebody was there. And he said it just scared the hell out of him. And he said he didn't really remember running out of there and leaving the money. He just knew he wanted to get out of there. The strange events become more frequent and the two managers share their experiences with trusted employees like Barbara Lard. All of us? <laughs> Bill and Tom would talk about different small things that had happened. I really didn't believe that there was really a ghost there. It was something fun to talk about and something fun to laugh about. But I didn't really truly believe. Hey, Tony, you got a nice place in here, man. Yeah, thank you. You book a lot of bands. Yeah, we're doing pretty well. One morning, a salesman visits the club. I figured, well, OK, I'm going to let him do his bill, tell him no. It's very simple. Everything's documented. as checks are written. You don't have to worry about finding your checkbook, balance, and all of that. Your managers can write the checks. And it really makes things a lot simpler. You don't have to worry about the bookkeeping later. It's, it really simplifies life. It makes your business move run much smoother, easier. Your bookkeeper is no
It scared the hell out of it. But, uh, uh, sorry about that. I, I don't eat. Uh... The violence of this latest event convinces Bill that he cannot ignore what's been happening. We were wondering what measures we should take. You can't close the doors on the business because we got a problem there. So we were kind of between a rock and a hard spot. On this particular night, we were packed to the gills. There was more people in there you could shake a stick at. Bartenders and waiters were just going 90 mile an hour trying to keep up with everybody. Unbelievable. There's 12 women waiting in line up there in the restaurant. I've got to go. Well, just go in my office here. Yeah. Go on, go on. It's open. Just go ahead and use oh, it. It's not open. Come see me. I got okay. to go. Okay. Thank you. When I went back to the office, it was very, very uncomfortable. I just was unsettled, and I thought, oh, I'm just a little nervous because we've been so busy. The owners. They're gonna die. They're gonna die. At the Lake Club. Waitress Barbara Lar believes that she has just seen a ghost. I just stood there. And I was in a state of shock. Barbara, what's wrong? She was just in terror. And I'm like, Barbara, what's the matter? I can't tell you. I can't tell you. She was just panicky. And I told her, I said, well, you know, go back in the office and sit down. Well, I'm not going back there, and I'm never going back there again. I told her, go ahead and take the rest of the night off. She was in total terror, and I'd never, I'd never seen her like that before. Day, Barbara describes the man she saw in the back office. I went in there and, and, he, and he spoke to me. I said, so What did he say? She said, I can't tell you. You can tell us? We can't help Why you can't you tell me? I can't, I can't tell you. I can't. One of the owners is going to die. I can't. Well, we can't help you out if, if you don't tell us what he said to you. We need to, we need to know. I made the decision yeah, not to tell Tom and Bill. I can't tell you. I can't and that answer. was very difficult. I was so scared, and I didn't want it to weigh heavy on their minds. Bill decides to seek answers from someone who knows more uh, about the Lake Club's history. He pays a visit to Dusty, the club's longtime caretaker. Oh. So everything good, right? Oh, everything. No problem. Okay, so she was in the bathroom and she saw this guy. I mean, big guy. Bill gives Bob, him Barbara's description yeah, of the Bob ghost. Six two, big head, big long mustache. That you know, sounds like, that sounds like Rudy. I mean, Rudy. Remember the guy I was telking you about? Remember? Dusty he, says it sounds like a former Gordon bartender Gordon. named Rudy Craner. Rudy. You mean the guy who's the guy bartender? To, yeah, he's the bartender here. Got a picture. Right yeah, there. look at that. He gives Bill a group of photos taken when Rudy worked at the club. I'll just, I'll show these to Barbara. I'll let her take a look at it. Trust okay. me, everything's fine. Okay. You're doing a great job. Listen. All right. 
Bill takes the photos to Barbara. Would you tell me? And I said, do you recognize anybody? This, this, this is him. That's who? This is the man that I saw. This is the man that I saw in your office. This is him. OK. Bill explains to the others what Dusty told him. Craner worked at the club in the days when Philip Dean and Tony Barbato ran the business. We're in a lot of trouble here. He made a small fortune in tips from well-heeled patrons of the club's illegal casino. Here's the deal. In December 1958, police raided the club and put a dent in Rudy's earnings. I'll take care of it. By tomorrow, we take care of it. Take care of it. The financial stress of the following years gave him excruciating stomach ulcers. In 1968, Rudy was diagnosed with cancer. There were also rumors that he had been accused of stealing money from the club. After years of financial troubles and physical pain, Rudy finally snapped. Dusty said that Rudy Craner was a Catholic. As a Catholic himself, Tom has a theory. Since suicide was the worst sin a Catholic could commit, he might be trapped between the planes of life. When we found out it was Rudy, he was the one perpetrating all this stuff around her. And he was getting violent. That scared me and Tom even more. I don't know. I don't know, Barbara. The violent way that he died, he might turn right around and use that violence again on somebody that I knew. And that thought just scared the hell out of me. Calm down. It's OK. All right? All right, calm down. Just... Bill is unaware that Barbara is harboring a terrible secret. Yes, I'm sure. Rudy's ghost told her that one of the club owners is going to die soon. He's not alive, so... Curing the secret of knowing that something was going to happen Be careful. really affected me. It just weighed so heavy on my heart because I just adored Tom and Bill both so much. That was just almost more than I could comprehend that, that I would lose either one of them. Hey, Bill. 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 Two ambitious business owners, the future looks grim. In the middle of a busy weekend night, and the beer tab suddenly loses pressure. All right, just uh, calm down. I gotta get out of here. 
downstairs from here. Everything's all right, okay? Go back home. Bill goes into the basement to fix it. I wanted to go down and give it a swift kick to get it working. And when I went down, the lights were all off down there. Bill is convinced that the haunting is real, but he's embarrassed to discuss it with his landlord, Philip Dean. There you go, my Thank friend. You. Thank you. All right. Okay. See you later. Good night. Yeah, I'll come by tomorrow again, okay? Uh, good night, guys. You. Thank you. suffers a fatal heart attack. Because of Rudy's warning, Barbara doesn't know how to respond to the sudden death. I had sorrow for the family, but there was such great relief, too, because it wasn't Tom and Bill. And that may sound cold or cruel, but that's how I felt. It was like relief. Barbara now feels that it's safe to share what the ghost of Rudy Craner told her. How you feeling? Well, she says, I can tell you what Rudy told me this. now. He said one of the owners was gonna die. And she was, I was afraid to tell you because I thought it might be one of you two. God, that scared me. <laughs> it still gives me the shakes. Tom and Bill wonder if Rudy Craner has predicted Philip Dean's death. Or if the ghost somehow caused his death. Did Rudy have something to do with it? Did he have enough energy that he stopped the owner's heart? If a supernatural entity did murder Philip Dean, Bill fears the same thing could happen to him. I thought maybe he's not going to draw the line at one owner. We knew that something had to be done. And Tom suggested getting a priest and blessing the place. Tom asks an old high school classmate, Gary Dilly, for help. Dilly is a Roman Catholic priest. It's good business, so Tom asks him if he thinks an evil spirit could be haunting the club. I believe there's a spiritual realm we don't understand. And I do believe the Catholic Church also teaches that uh, these spirits can communicate to us in different ways. We in America don't like to believe in these things because we're rational people who are highly educated and that kind of belongs to the superstitious. Mm -hmm. 
but I think it's far from superstitious. I think there's a reality there. Within seconds, an ice cold presence embraces Father Dilly. Wait a minute. What is it? You could feel expectations. And it felt like someone had left a door open to a, a walk-in freezer. It goes right he through. says, you certainly have something here. through the whole place on my own. And from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head, I knew there was someone with me. I could feel it. to the Lake Club with two colleagues to perform a blessing, hoping to put the spirit of Rudy Craner to rest. St. Michael the Archangel prayer. We believe that St. Michael and Lucifer battled, and we believe St. Michael is a powerful source for us. Prayers can make a, a spirit angry. And when they get angry, you don't know what they're going to do. Father Dilly knows that angry spirits can sometimes take possession of the living. They can attach on to a person that's in the room and try to bathe their body and take them over. Father, we 
have to leave this room. So he said, now that we've let bless the place, let's get way back away from the building. And I said, what, the building's gonna blow up? I mean, he said, could, could possibly happen. That freaked me out. When they go back in, something has changed. When I went back into the club, I didn't feel cold chills. I didn't feel the hair go up on my back. My I felt very comfortable there. Tom, it's much peaceful, much more peaceful. Really? Yes. The building just became very, very quiet, and the coldness was gone. It's peaceful. peaceful. Well, thank you. Father Dilly believes that Rudy has heard their prayers. Thank you, Father. Rudy was stuck in time. He wanted people to know he was there. He didn't want to be forgotten. And I think that through our prayers, he was able to let go of this earth and go where he was supposed to be. The blessing puts an end to the paranormal activity. The popularity of the club begins to wane. We made it for about another six months, and then we closed it down. After the blessing, I felt much more at peace. It was almost like, okay, now Rudy can rest. He will be at peace. It changed my belief that there is an afterlife. Uh, certainly, we don't know about it, and sometimes you don't think about it, but there is something that goes on after we die with what's ever left of us. Let you stay upstairs, okay? Yeah. Y'all take care, you know. Right. Well, care. Before all this happened, I never believed in a ghost. Well, but I'm a believer now. And I don't care what people say. I know it happened.